Okay. So this tutorial we would be giving it as I and I. I'm much more here, a lot more to help on the any other conceptual issues and Nazaria hopefully will take us through some of the demo but before that who has already set up some environment and tested let's hear if there are people who already set up or or who's confused like after reading hopefully you had a, ch a chance to read um, the challenge document and and going through so you know is there any outstanding thing that you have noticed Did you? Uh, yes, uh, on my side, I've set up the environment and I've been trying to work on the Remix ID, uh, but still, I, I wasn't able to fill up with some filters on my testnet. And, uh, maybe you can also can work through on that. It would be great. Which one? Which one? Uh, filling up with some filters on the testnet. Okay. But I, I wasn't able to do that. Okay. Okay. Anyone else say anything? How do you feel this week versus, you know, week, was that week eight? Ken? Hello. I haven't hey. set up the environment yet. I just had a question. Which technology yeah. are we using to implement the mobile language? Is it Android or yes. What language are you using to develop the mobile app? Yeah, so normally, of course, Java is one that that's natural to it, but there is also a way to build uh, with a number of tools, in particular, JavaScript types that are um, React as well as also Flutter, whatever it is, but there's a lot more of JavaScript or Java, but you could also, there are also no code solutions. That means solutions that are basically, you specify what you want and basically the app is developed in the background. You know, it's basically, they are called no code solutions. So there is one at least, and there are a few, and there are probably many that you could build also like that. But yeah, the, you know, the, there are a number of tools uh, within the JavaScript. I'm sure there are many, but Flutter and React probably are another ones, the two common ones. Okay. Yeah, is that clear? Does it, Ken? Yeah, it's clear. Okay. Anyone else? How do you feel? How do you feel now versus the beginning of week? Was that week eight? Uh, or I'm not sure which, which week was, uh, week six, you know. Was that week yeah. six? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it was a six. So how do you feel now compared to then? Mm -hmm. you know? Personally, I feel like uh, I'm much more ready since uh, we have the basic understanding of uh, Web3 and uh, smart contracts and so on, but as the others were saying, maybe the mobile developing part is a bit intimidating. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to share some feeling? So, you know what I am trying to model is if I were in the background and if I'm attending a meeting, how do I feel? Like, in a way that would I feel august? Like, that means like I'm being asked and then I'm answering, or do I feel like that I'm I'm just like with friends, you know, lots of kind of communication, and I just feel like I raise my hand as much as whatever pops up in my head, and I can't distinguish which ones are for most people. Uh, there are the usual people which I feel are like that, who really can raise their hand because it just feels among friends and colleagues, and others I'm not sure if they just are passively feeling like, okay, I'm not asked, I'm not going to do anything. So you must turn yourself, I mean, maybe not for you, but in real life, you, if you are behind the screen, and if it is an important thing for you, you must be active, just 
you know, to give you an idea, Jeremy. Uh, it's a question. Uh, are we supposed to build a mobile app or web app? Mobile app, um, if you can. If you can't, of course, both, right? So, like, so the web app would allow the creator to control. The mobile app controls basically the the device to to interact. So, so this means do you have to learn a new language like that or uh, React Native? Yeah, sure. Yeah, if it's yeah, find I think yeah, you are learning. If you don't know, learn it. If it's so much difficult, try to also to go to to do shortcuts to get shortcuts. Like the no code solution is one. I'm not sure if they have the very, how much you can build, how much complex, but there are many no code solutions. Okay. okay. Great. Yeah, exactly. So the, there are definitely many, many alternatives. It's just they have to find, but you know, attempt it uh, with a strategy without too much spending time. If you can learn it quickly, that would be great. Um, okay, so then maybe Azaria, are you ready to walk through the few setups? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, hello everyone. Um, what we're going to be going over today is um, the just the installation process that was given as a resource. Um, and if everyone has their setup already ready, we can go over um, the installation of the different tools that you're going to use throughout the week. Um, yeah, and we can debug um, all those tools as we go along. Yeah, um, so I've sent the link again here in the message. Um, yeah. Uh, so if some of you have already started uh, experimenting with smart contract or Solidity code, um, you might have seen this Remix ID. So this Remix ID allows us to get started with everything um, really quickly. Um, it's, so as you can see, you can see some of the concepts um, of the Ethereum blockchain. It gives us um, a JavaScript virtual machine, um, which would be simulating the simulating the blockchain, um, an account, um, and all the things that we would require to actually get set up. Um, but this definitely has a lot of limitations as we move along. Um, some of the limitations are it requires an internet connection as this is an online IDE. Um, there will be limited support for testing and um, yeah, you would definitely run into a lot of trouble because um, yeah, there isn't really as much support as having a local um, development environment. Um, yeah, so let's start, let's start with the first tool that we're going to install, which is Hardhat. So what Hardhat is, it is simply a framework which is going to allow us to easily build a smart contract and it offers us um, this robust development environment, which would allow us to compile our smart contract, easily deploy it, um, and easily debug and check for errors. Um, because um, this process is really essential because once um, a code is really in the blockchain, um, once it is actually deployed on the main network, it is really hard to change over and fix mistakes. It is not like a normal application. Um, so hard hat makes that process more or less easier. Um, yeah, so let's install hard hat as a dev dependency. Um, I think you can see my screen. Um, So oh, as hard hat is installing. Yeah, okay, so 
the, the two things that we actually need as, as it is installing, we can go over things. You first need to have Node.js installed. I'm um, sorry, I assumed that. Uh, so if you go to nodejs.org, um, yeah, um, you can find your, for the specific OS that you're using, find and download um, Node.js. Um, and after you go through the installation process to make sure that, to verify that node is installed, you can do node-v. Uh, yeah, and so I have node installed and installing, um, I think recent versions of node.js actually give, gives us also NPM. Um, so, okay, so what node.js is, simply a javascript you can think of it as a yeah it is a javascript runtime environment so it allows us to execute javascript um, code outside of the browser and what npm is is it's simply a package um, it's a package manager for node.js and it allows us to interact with um, various modules so we have both of them installed which is and so that npm is installing hard hat at the moment. So make sure you have uh, Node.js, NPM installed, and um, yeah, once you do this, it will go on to install hard hats. And, and while it's being installed, you could also ask some questions, conceptual as well as technical. So how much of the references has anyone checked already? Gazine, go on. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, I see the documentation of uh, this one, and uh, uh, I mean, have that. And it says uh, it's better for professional programmers. So will it be a difficulty for us to work with it? Uh, it, it is, you are getting, you are professional. We are not at all training you for lower than that okay but it basically means it has production grade uh, ability and all of them i mean i think the most popular is uh, truffle but hard hat is much more easier for a number of advantages i mean if you go to a crossing points um just if you scroll down so, so take it this. Okay. Yeah, so the hard hat benefit is basically it is really the uh, first thing is really has um, network for it, and that is so setting up that is very simple. Um, I think it's it's also currently a lot more being used, uh, even if it's still like you know, like. Uh, uh, Truffle has probably 34 or something K, but it's one of the most being used in professionally. So it's, uh, I think that's the part. And I think there are other advantages. I mean, it's only looking, but I'm just gonna. Usually, if you, if you look hard hat versus Truffle, you really see that a lot more advantage. A lot more people from Truffle are going for hard hat for a number of reasons. Um, but again, why I didn't want to specify only one hard hat versus Truffle or Brownie is because three of them are the very most used ones. And it's good to just first have experience and choose which one is easier for your type of work. So I expect you to set up three of them, test three of them, at least one, use it once to compile one example, and then you will be able to feel it. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, it has installed hard hat as a dev dependency here for us. Um, yeah, and so if it has, um, 
executed properly when you do mpx high path you should see high path so what it allows you to do is yeah we can create a javascript project and where we would want to actually have it yeah um, yeah and so it gives like if you see here it gives us this template for where our contracts would be um yeah and um other scripts that we're going to look um into tomorrow um, so yeah and this script adds um additional things that we're going to use for Content. Um, yeah. And so you can run this once this finishes. Um, yeah. If anyone is having a hard time installing Node.js or npm or um, hard hat. Mm. Yeah, and so we've talked about uh, the main net and the test net, and I think you've previously seen um, on algorithms the difference between the yeah. Uh, and so what hard hat also allows us to do is um, it also gives us oh, I have been... um, yeah so what it allows us to do is it gives us a test net as well um, with various accounts that we use to interact with um, as you've seen already um, the blockchain is um, the blockchain states are mappings between accounts and um, different values of that account uh, which are the balance um, for smart contract the code um, and various parts so this gives us um, a test node locally that we can interact with um, so hard hat also provides that as well so that is what it's saying um, yeah and so that is done this allows us to install yeah, those things that we've seen um, i think let's see this node as well
Yeah, you can. Yeah, definitely, you will be facing issues with different node versions, and yeah, um, you'd have to check whether the package is supported for that specific version. Go to the issues page, and um, yeah, resolve some of the issues that you'll be facing um, with the different versions. Um, yeah, I think the version that I'm using is 18.3 at the moment. Um, yeah. So yeah, um, as you can see, the package.json is where we'll find what the things that our project depends on. Um, yeah, and you can see hard hat, you can see try the testing framework and other um, libraries that we've installed. Um, yeah, so let's start the node locally um, that hard hat provides. And this should give us the, the test network with um, the account and give us the private keys that we're going to be using to interact with. We already see here a warning with two of the things that we're using, um, which are not really working together. And yeah, so definitely look into how to resolve and which versions of the two packages actually um, resolve the issue. Um, it's taking quite some time. Yeah. So the local node. Um, is already started and it has given us an account um, with some dummy funds, um, 10,000 each, um, which we can use to play around um, with the smart contract. When we deploy transactions, you'd need, um, you need to, when we deploy a smart contract, yeah, we need to trigger it from, we need to deploy it from an, an account, um, so that would actually cost that would cost us some eat, and so like this will be used to play around with it. So Hard Hat has provided us um, with a local test need um, and all the scripts that are required to actually help us throughout our development journey. Um, yeah. So what compilation is, is um, the code that we write in Solidity is not really, um, yeah, it, it is human readable form. And so it needs to be compiled down into, uh, into bytecode, uh, into something that can actually run in, on, on the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, and so that is the compilation process. And um, Hardhat also does that process. So, for example, if we we can create a new, uh, for example, if we go to Solidity Docs, and it's, uh, like the initial, we get the smallest. Um, getting started example, um, so let's see by example. So this is a bit too much. Uh, yeah, so for example, if we see a very simple contract, uh, which just stores some data and um, retrieves it, which is an unsigned integer in this case, um, we have this contract and Hardhat would make everything easier 
um, yeah, and we'd compile that code down for us. Uh, so npx hard hat compile. We do the compilation process. Um, yeah, this pragma solidity. Um, we might have we might face issues if we do not have the specific compiler versions. I'm not sure if it actually resolves it itself or downloads the required compiler. Yeah, but this this is all about hard hats, and so it gives us this um, development flow of um, yeah from the so it has compiled our solidity files um and it also allows us um, easy deployment into the contract um we see that um some other time but yeah it gives us this flow of smart contract development and blockchain development um yeah and i think yeah we has gone to the benefits um really well so let's go over the installation of traffic we can go over but maybe just before that let's ask like if people have any like what is do you have any challenge have you gone through yeah that is hello can you hear me yes okay uh, whatever the question is uh, now we have set up the hard hat uh, and it really worked from my side also. So is, is this one is uh, considered as a backend? For example, we will, we will develop either web app or mobile app to communicate with this contract. So is it a backend side or a front end? No, this is development. So the smart contract that is in the public, either in the test net or in in the main net, will be your backend. Okay. You know, this, basically, this is truthful. Whatever is helping you to automate that. You know, uh, what is VS Code doing? Is VS Code any? Um, you know, I mean, it, it's a tool. I mean, of course, in this case, it's just but like more of think of them as. I think it's PyCharm, whatever. There is a, two components of them. One component, even in base code, like for example, you have, uh, you can install some elements like Python development environment. So this is exactly that. So okay. Truffle okay. or whatever is just, you know, a uh, development environment. Okay. In their own, about, uh, yeah, uh, in their own It's about set up India. Exactly. So it's yeah. a development Thank environment. Yeah. Thank you. And SDKs, you can also consider it as just much more SDK in that sense, because they can you can compile. Ultimately, you know, it's like PyTIL in an Algorand. Uh, it is you basically have to compile it back to some kind of the bytecode, and this helps you ultimately to test, to develop, whatever, whatever, and get your bytecode. Your and then that bytecode it also allows you to directly. Uh, upload it or deploy it in the mainnet or in, in the testnet. The all any question else? Any question? Not great. Let's continue. Yeah. So um, another framework that can um. That, that can be really helpful um, to look at and help us through our um, blockchain development journey is Truffle. Um, so it does, it does the same thing and there is the same process. Um, Martin has one question, just let's, let's hear. Just, uh, Martin? Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Yabewal. I wanted to ask this to, concerning the the one that we were downloading the hard hat do we is it we're going to connect it with some uh backend or does it have like its own backend that is 
uh, where we can run the Ethereum and all that. How do we how do we connect the two? Red, do you want to answer or? Yeah. Okay. Um, so hard hat like so the Ethereum you can think of the Ethereum blockchain as a server, right? Um, so we're going to be interacting with it. Um, and so what hard hat does is it eases that deployment. So um, we would have our smart contract code, um, and um, like so, finally we would be deploying that code um, over to the Ethereum blockchain and um, our web application would, co would come from the other side and interact with that blockchain. Um, but what Hard Hat is, uh, was actually doing previously was it was giving us this um, dummy Ethereum network, um, right? With those addresses, with um, those dummy asset values, with that um, fake um, ether that we could actually play around with. So it was providing us with um, this dummy server because playing around in the actual server is really expensive. Um, yeah, and so it's doing okay. multiple things. Yeah. Okay, so can can we like say it's a sandbox? Um, yeah, yeah, you can you can think of it that way. So in in the sense of like if you think of the uh, algorand, it's exactly just the sandbox. So it provides okay. you local, local instance of, uh, you know, the, the entire Ethereum. But of course you create everything there and it's just local, it's not public. When you think of now in Algorand sense, the pure stake uh, or others that basically provides you a test net, that's basically the test net also here. And then the Algorand has a main net, basically that's the main net here as well, the Ethereum. So, and, and like, for example, that's the differences between Truffle and uh, Hard Hat. Hard Hat provides you that seamlessly. While you would see Truffle, you basically have to install and start up, for example, a new Ethereum chain or a network locally using it's called Ganache. It's a different one. So, but in 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 the Hard Hat sense, you don't need to. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I think uh, you answered my question, but just to verify, uh, on Algorand, uh, there were three like networks, you know, the main net, the uh, test net, and the private network that you can download and uh, run uh, locally on your machine. So, uh, does that is that what uh, Hardat is giving us, the private network uh, analogous? In Hardat is a development environment, but it, it, it provides that. It is true, it's it's not on itself just providing that, but it, yeah, it provides that plus everything else. So we can use that uh, uh, offline uh, to exactly. develop our, okay. And, and you have to know because, you know, in, in testnet, so they have two types of testnets, if you remember in, in Algorand. One was I think the normal test net, and there was another one, I forgot uh, its name, uh, which, so I think that's one of your reading assignments here is that in Ethereum, there are, I think three, four, five other public test nets because the different test nets have different functionality, what they want to set up, right? Some of them are proof of work test nets. Some of them are proof of, stake, proof of authority, other things like that. So they, but all of them, ultimately the protocol is the same. Whenever we say testnet, it means the protocol is the same. The protocol that is dictating Ethereum is the same in whichever network you are. Minium. Okay, uh, just another question. Um, on Algorand, the, the uh, smart contracts were considered as another like account, uh, like a normal user account uh, that can interact, uh, uh, that can, you know, you, you can send interaction uh, transactions to and receive transactions from. So, uh, I'm, is I'm, that I'm not sure. I'm not sure if even that's correct, even in Algorand. 
I'm not sure if smart contracts are a normal account, whether or they are created by an account. So, uh, the, I said that in a sense that um, they can receive in the uh, uh, transactions. They can hold. Uh, they, they have their yeah, own. Yeah, it's, it's the same everywhere. Smart contracts uh, okay. are even they are yeah they are accounts, but they are different type of account because they are a smart contract account and they don't have a private for example they don't have a private key right the only reason is because an external what's called an external account owns them and then the only the first whichever smart contract must be the beginning of any relation to it the beginning you know the the, the root of it must be an externally owned account that means a human account or you know an account with a private um, uh, address right so the private key so then after that a smart contract can activate another smart contract and a smart contract can create another smart contract a smart contract do everything else what normal accounts do they can send messages they can do you know, all, all sorts of things but the only thing is that they don't have they don't own they don't have private key so they must be started uh, the you know basically the process must be started at the beginning, at the root of it, by uh, an externally owned account. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, no further questions, so Zare, proceed. So, um, where were we? Yeah. So we installed Truffle, um, yeah, and we can initialize. Uh, so I was trying to start here. Yeah, so we can do Truffle in it to actually initialize uh, Truffle project which is the same as we did um, previously. Um, and so after we do a truffle init, um, we would get this files where we would store our contracts, um, our migrations, our test files. So our contracts are our smart contracts. Um, the migrations are um, more or less like deploy scripts. Um, that we're going to use to move our contracts into the blockchain. Um, and in this truffleconfig.js file is um, where you'd find um, really relevant information um, over which you're going to interact with the blockchain with. Um, and so unlike the Unlike hard hat, um, we don't we can't simply um, bring up the test net that was provided, um, and so it's so the travel suite is a component of many parts. If you go into the yeah into the travel suite, you can see that um, it has travel it has travel itself. It has ganache, um, which is um, the test blockchain. So you could. Um, go to the Ganache docs um, to learn more. Yeah, and so it is a personal blockchain that we um, would use for rapid Ethereum development. And so I've already downloaded it. And um, so this this is right here is Ganache. Um, so if you say uh, quick start Ethereum, it would give you that dummy blockchain that um, Hard Hat was providing as well um, with fancy UI. Um, yeah, and this really allows you to really um, see in depth the accounts and the different interactions that are going to happen. So just like Hard Hat did, it gives us addresses with um, specific balances. Um, yeah, and so this is our dummy blockchain. Um, and so this right now is, I think, running. So this... Um, yeah, expose itself. It's the port seventy five forty five. Um, so it is running on, and it is our, the blockchain is running locally. 
um, exposed to 7545. So since when you were developing your app, you would um, yeah, uncomment this development environment and change this to 7545 to actually interact with it. And so uh, when you write your contracts and um, you deploy them, the contract would be deployed um, on this running Ganache server on this um, blockchain. Um, and yeah, so I think that's that's it about Truffle as well. Yeah, you'd migrate and it allows you to compile um, your code to low level machine understandable code um, that you'd use you then deploy into the blockchain. Um, yeah. And I think that's that's about it from Truffle as well. Any questions? Okay. So I think if there are not any other questions, um, the last installation to go through is to Brown, right? Yeah. So I think let's go over that question. Yeah. I think go on. Um, or can. Okay, thank you, Azaria. Uh, uh, I think on the block that you have working on, mm. there, there are many, many things which are said there, and uh, which which one is the best one to work with? Uh, some of them recommend hard hat, and there is also another one. So which is appropriate for us maybe yes. to continue with um, I, th I think yeah you can give uh, the better answer um definitely hard hat is um gaining more traction um if you're going to use python um you'd probably go with brownie um but there's a lot of shifts towards um using full javascript because yeah web3 is definitely a continuation of work to in which JavaScript plays um, a significant part, um, and I, I don't think you can go wrong um, picking it away. But you definitely have to do more research on the app if you want to give. Um, which uh, development environment and framework is actually better to use? Um, I think for JavaScript, yeah, again, hard hat versus uh, Truffle. Yeah. I think currently there is a lot of people seem to prefer hard hat, uh, sorry, a hard hat, not Truffle. But also, really, Brownie is something people consider a lot in the Python environment. So I think it just is, yeah, like. Uh, in a way, this is a preference of what kind of setup and what kind of coding structure and what kind of uh, you know documentation is important. How easy you can browse. So hard hat, for example, I have a lot of example um, to play with, and that's easy. A lot of implementations are in Truffle because Truffle is longer and has a, a number of references I gave you are also in Truffle actually, um, and very basically probably none in very few, if there is one or two in hard hat. And not probably not much more in Brownie because if you search default and by just the number of users, truthful is quite a lot. But I would say testing whatever is simpler in, in hard hat. So I would say just play with it this week and you might, you might already in one or two days, you might get your preference easily. So for all practical purposes, I think it's whichever you adopt, it's going to be fine.
but hard hat is much more uh, being recommended these days. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I think definitely if um, you were a huge fan of Python, um, Brownie is definitely something to look at. Um, it is built over um, on top of Web 3.py, um, which is used to yeah, again interact with the Ethereum blockchain. Um, yeah, look at Brownie and also look at Web 3.py. Uh, so yeah, what I did was just create a virtual environment here, uh, and uh, it's in small pipex. Um, says yeah, it is the recommended way by Brownie. So pipex is um, those familiar with JavaScript. It is the similar to npx, um, and it allows us to. Um, run uh, Python applications, um, yeah, in isolated environments. So, yeah, so what this does, I haven't gone through the installation process myself, so I will name feedback. Um, and we can just use it. Um, yeah, so it installs its brownie, the brownie of its development and environment that it. All right, um, Yeah, and so this just gives us um, the installation process. Yeah. So this brownie is then the Python development framework for Ethereum. And it really gives us, again, the same things above, but with Python. What is the question? Sorry. No, no, no. There's no question. Okay. Uh, are we done with the, now the? Um, no. Uh, it is still uh, installing Brownie, okay. but um, I'm not really that much familiar with. So, if you want to see a couple of things well, with Brownie, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. I mean, I, I also am not that. I haven't tested it myself. The only thing I know is that this is actually. Uh, no, it's a much more competitive uh, compared to, so it, it's like the hard hat, it's just that for everyone that is uh, Python based, actually, you can do anything you do in, in any other package. The, so in, in some way, if you prefer Python, go for Brownie, I think. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, so if you choose brownie maybe to develop it that means you'll do the back end with brownie then the front end you'll do with uh, react yeah yeah but i mean again let's let's make it very very uh, clear even if you are running brownie you're still writing smart contract with uh, basically the solidity so it's just that the way of compiling and testing and whatever is just in Python, it means. You know, I mean, it's just don't get confused. This is just a development environment, how you compile, how whatever is different, but how you ultimately 
what you are generating is exactly the same as the you know like the same as it's just that exactly the you will you will be compiling that in any way still and you will be testing whatever your setup can be python you know it's, i mean just so if you are into python and i am mostly just i haven't tested it myself but you know you can use basically that uh, browning and ultimately you then deploy a smart contract and that smart contract will be a pi you know basically um a bytes a byte code and that is living in in the public network and basically that's it you know then you interact with it the same as you would interact whether you used hard hat or truthful or whatever you deployed so there's no change from essentially it's just a matter of who's using what so a lot of the people that are developing are comes from javascript that's why hard hat and truthful are much more the, the first thing you would hear all right uh, thank you Yeah. Um, I thought this is installing. Um, I'm not that familiar with Brownie, yeah. and um, yeah, you definitely have to go over the resources provided. Um, but if there are any questions, I would um, definitely like to try and answer them over the installation process. And if anyone has any trouble um, installing any of this um, so far. If not, uh, I think this is it. And um, I think, uh, Iridia, you asked that question in sufficient sense. It's probably that they don't have yet, like I'm also testing the the part with tweets. So because the ring by, um, for example, this is the faucet for ring by and they have insufficient funds, but I, I see that there are zero peers. That's why it's probably we have to come back some time. Um, but also, I think the goal So let's just check faucets. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll share what I'm doing. Okay. So if you are just on the public. So this is the ring pie, and I'm just gonna share. This is the ring pie faucet. So what do I do just in general? So I have a MetaMask, right? And if I want to buy, like if I want to um, go to the Gorilla, for example, um, testnet, then I wanna buy, but I wanna buy from the faucet and enter address to receive funds and basically that is that and i will enter the address and request zero points eth error internal i think this is the one that i need to understand maybe it's excuse just, me uh, yeah we are not seeing your screen ah. So, a window. Don't you hear? Don't you see my Chrome? You can't use my. We can't see my my Chrome. Yeah, you're presenting, but we cannot see. Yeah, it comes out blank. Yeah, I don't know what is going on. Uh, I think somehow these things are failing but okay let me maybe let me quit and then
What about now? Do you see my screen? Yes. It's now. Okay. So what I was doing is, so you install a MetaMask extension, and then after that, you basically activate it, and you basically go and, you know, this show height testnet would, would tell you. And now I am just selecting the Gorilla, for example, right? And I want to buy. When I want to buy, of course, I can go from different directly deposits. Uh, if you already have some Gorilla ETH, the quickest way is that one. Another one is the, the ETH. And this one, I think this one is not, so I have to probably register. Um, so in the MetaMask, if I click again, I can get my, so now I need to connect it. Okay, so I maybe what about okay, I need I need to connect with one of the nodes so it's not being connected. Um, um, yeah. Connect. Yeah, okay, now that is connected, and then I can buy. Get it here. And then I can request. Okay, this one. What I'm connected at. So let me see. So in the row. Stand. And that is. So maybe connected and no, I want to buy. This one not sure. Get back to you, just uh, but it, it's just saying, keep saying internal server error. So let me get back. But the thing is, that would be so this would be on for the gorilla. But if you are also going for the say, I think I was just testing the, it, the wrinkle, and now if you want to buy, you go to the that one. And if I want the faucet, crypto faucet, then so I need to probably connect with this one again, not connected. So connect sites, this one. Uh, yeah. It's 
connected. Okay, now, so this one is requiring, you have to see that you have to tweet your address and you're basically gonna get then, you, you would like to go then um, and ask, so I've already tweeted and I'm just gonna, my tweet address and give me eater let's say 85 80.5 let's see if it's processing if it's giving me or not earlier it was saying yeah insufficient fence that's the ah okay now i can't so bots done done basically it it looks a bot but i'm not sure if that's a bot yeah yeah someone was saying was was there a hand raised so i will i will uh, oh, okay. Okay, I think that's yeah. So that's exactly the the one that I was checking. And, but it is not request funds via Twitter. Make a tweet with your Ethereum address, paste it, and. Into the contents, copy paste the tweet URL into the above box and fire away. That's really it. Okay, if I look at that one, still it's not still zero. Uh, but yeah, I, I will I will see, but this would be how you would ask for a, like a, an Ethereum. Huh? I didn't hear. Can you unmute it and say, Azaria? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I think Tedros has also sent a faucet, but the chain link faucet, um, the link that I've sent uh, also okay. works. Yeah. Um, and it gives you. Okay. So that basically, let's try. So this one, because I mean, I was trying that the other one. So, yeah. requests, testnet, but which testnet? Connect the wallet. Metamask. Okay, next. Connect. Okay, wallet 20 test link. Like that. I am a human. And please click it to containing a train. Uh, that, that, just that. that. Let's fold this one too. Okay, send a request. Yeah, so now yeah, I should have zero point. Yeah. So that should be great. That should be the case. You did, yeah. So, I mean, if I want for Martin, I think if, if, I, if you want to just generate a new address, you basically are like Rob Pestinet address and. Um, Um, 
you basically can generate one from a metamask so i think but the one thing you have to know in all of the networks the address is the same so the same address works everywhere so it's not it's only smart contracts that are local to the network but the accounts are the same Great. Does that make sense? Any question anymore? Yeah. I think I think this is one of the reading that you should you should know that accounts are the same in every testnet mainnet, but whatever you deployed, smart contract you deployed in one network only exists in that network. Hopefully that's clear. Anything else? Yeah, so that's a request for Everest and um, Abdullahi. Just that's why I saying, like, can you please upload it as soon as possible? Wonderful. Okay, great. Cheers, guys, and thanks, Cesare, again for the help. Bye. Bye. So, uh, Ten Academy team, can you please stop recording?